Good morning, uh, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. Um, thank you to the AG for inviting me to this uh, local chapter London um, again. I think I was here uh, a year ago, and uh, we thought that we will be meeting in person next time. Obviously, it didn't happen, so maybe the third time will be in person. Um, so my name is Amin Waraba, I'm a geophysicist and head of processing at Stride. And today, uh, I want to talk to you about uh, the uh, a very powerful combination of nimble node um, systems with aggressive simultaneous source shooting that allowed the acquisition of the uh, densest land seismic survey, um, nodal seismic survey on the planet. Um, before I start, I would also like to acknowledge uh, BP, ADNOC and uh, CGG uh, as I'm using, uh, reusing actually a lot of published material uh, of the work we have done together. The outline of this presentation is as follows. Uh, first, I'll set the context of repeated surveys and the quest for better quality. We'll touch on the tools available today to acquire high density seismic uh, very efficiently first time around. Then we will bring up uh, exa an example of a very dense survey acquired by ADNOC in 2019 using the stride nodes, also known as the nimble nodes, uh, combined with simultaneous source shooting. Uh, we will discuss some specific aspects of the processing uh, and results, including, uh, including seismic attributes. And then uh, we will show why we believe uh, this data is, uh, uh, is fit for future technologies. Um, and very unlikely to, acquire, to require a reshoot uh, unless it's for 4D, and then finish with conclusions. Let's start by setting up uh, the context here. I think we all have been a part of this cycle at some point in our career, uh, where we set up the ultimate survey design, uh, yet to be toned down uh, either in size or density due to the um, cost uh, and time restrictions. Uh, we do acquire the survey anyway, because uh, we need to, and sometimes because we have to. Uh, we process the data, send to the interpreters, and maybe a year, or, um, a year later we have some uncertain results, which uh, we have to use because that's the only information we have to make, uh, to make a decision. Uh, while we keep working the data through uh, some tech limit studies, to be uh, told a few years later that uh, we probably need to go back and acquire uh, a denser survey. Uh, the issue is that uh, the surface of the planet doesn't wait for us and things change, uh, sometimes quite dramatically, uh, and especially if the area has proven to have uh, uh, successful resources. Um, infrastructures are built uh, and often block access to allow us to, uh, to do um, a better seismic. Uh, we are also confronted to noisier environments, uh, tougher regulation, uh, regulations, especially uh, in environmentally um, sensitive area. And ir ironically, if you decide to go back, uh, it means that uh, you really need a denser survey, uh, which makes all of the above constraints uh, even more challenging. We uh, know that denser surveys deliver better subsurface images and attributes, especially in land environments. And we have seen a significant rise in uh, trace density in the last couple of decades. Firstly, made available by the distribution of uh, source arrays to autonomous to become autonomous single source point, uh, often shooting simultaneously, uh, achieving uh, incredible speed and efficiency. Tens of thousands of VP points per day is something that uh, is achieved regularly with simultaneous source shooting. And uh, to catch up with uh, these uh, very fast moving sources, uh, receiver systems started increasing channel counts, uh, but they're bulkiness and cost um, limited their efficiency. Um, uh, nodes came to achieve this same philosophy of distributing this time the receiver points. Um, and although early nodes were still quite bulky, uh, the, the latest generation are extremely light and nimble. Uh, and therefore the very powerful combination between an unlimited channel count system uh, and an, ag an aggressive simultaneous source shooting is uh, actually finally possible. Obviously, in between, uh, we have the progress in processing capabilities, which made the handling of this uh, new generation of data uh, also possible. To uh, illustrate this combination, um, I'll take the example of an ultra high, high density seismic survey acquired by ADNOC in 2019 using 50,800 stride nodes and a relatively aggressive simultaneous shooting with 16 vibrosize. The area chosen was uh, an 83 square kilometers of uh, mixed terrain, um, including sand dunes and oil field infrastructure. 
The density of uh, 184 million trans per square kilometers was achieved using a double-sided parallel uh, spread rolling over five zippers. Um, receivers were deployed at 12.5 uh, by 12.5 meter uh, spacing and the sources were at 100 by 12.5 meter spacing. So uh, thanks to the combination of these two very powerful acquisition technologies, um, this uh, quite um, uh, remarkable dense, uh, density was acquired in just uh, 53 days with a line crew of 36 people. So this is a, a picture of the large scale system uh, as it was set up in the camp um, in this field trail. Uh, by the way, it took um, 12 hours, two technicians actually, to set up the whole system, as you can see in here. Um, in the foreground uh, here, you can see about 35,000 nodes out of the 50,800 uh, nodes used in this uh, trial. This is extremely compact by any standard. If this was um, uh, either a cable system or any other nodal system, probably the whole camp uh, would have been filled with uh, equipment. So this large scale system consists of uh, three uh, standard 20 foot container, as you can see in here, and each container has got um, a specific function. The one to the left is the charging and harvesting unit. Um, it can charge and harvest 3,240 nodes simultaneously, uh, making it capable of turning around 20,000 nodes per day with one person on a shift. Um, the middle unit uh, is the uh, cleaning unit, and it can turn around 40,000 nodes per day, also with one person on a shift. And the uh, uh, container to the right uh, houses the um, computing power um, and has also the space uh, for the operators to run the system and QAQC the data. Operational results were quite outstanding. Uh, the crews achieved an average deployment and retrieval speed of uh, about 15 seconds per station for 12.5 meter spacing, as you can see in here. Um, they were deploying uh, 10,000 nodes per day and retrieving another 10,000 node nodes the same day. Um, uh, as you can see here, and there was, this was quite consistent throughout the duration of the survey, which took 53 days. Um, this wasn't a 24 hour operation. The crews were working on average about six hours per day. Uh, the crew, uh, the crews um, uh, average about 7,000 VP per day, as you can see in here, um, peaking at 10,000 on several days. Um, and because of the uh, uh, rolling of the spread and the uh, splitting of the survey into five zippers, uh, actually half a million deployments of nodes were made at this survey. So what's good about uh, such dense surveys? Uh, well, first, the fast track of such densities uh, has a very different look to what we are used to uh, with conventional seismic. Very simple process, usually deliver very valuable information that can be used a few weeks after uh, the end of, uh, of the survey. In the case of this field trial, a fast track uh, PSTM, uh, uh, shown here on the right hand side, was run uh, in 10 weeks and already showed uh, subtle clanoforms uh, with deline delineations comparable to a legacy final PSTM uh, shown here on the left hand side. Uh, which took much longer to process. Um, this means that better decisions uh, can be made uh, under time constraints. Deep blending has uh, always been a subject of debate when it comes to simultaneous source uh, shooting, but um, the fact is that it has been dramatically improved in the last 10 years, uh, replacing the traditional random noise attenuation in the receiver space with uh, inversion-based approaches, uh, which are fast, accurate, and uh, data-driven, which is very important in the, uh, uh, in the context of high density. These algorithms are widely used these days uh, in the industry. Uh, one thing to know about uh, these algorithms is that they require all shots to be recorded, uh, including bad shots, uh, to give the best results. And that's something that continuous recording used in nodal systems uh, always provide. Here we see the results of the deep blending on three different sorting domains, the receivers, uh, the shots and uh, a time slice from the cross spread uh, showing excellent results with negligible amount of uh, blending noise uh, going across in any of these domains. The density of the source receiver pairs um, has had a significant impact on the quality of the near surface model, which was uh, extremely detailed, uh, whether calculated through a conventional refraction tomography approach or a surface wave inversion approach. 
um, both delivered uh, very good statics uh, and uh, um, the refraction tomography was, uh, was selected to be integrated to the PSDM model building. Um, surface consistent processing was uh, also quite successful, uh, as you'd expect from such huge redundancy of uh, information. It had corrected for subtle surface variations, but also uh, was showing that the overall coupling of the receivers in this survey was, uh, was very consistent. Uh, this is particularly visible on the filter uh, phase map showing um, uh, corrections of few degrees within uh, zippers and also across uh, zippers for both low frequencies and mid range frequencies. Uh, to the left here, you see uh, the effect of the amplitude corrections on the uh, receiver RMS map, uh, which is obviously not perfect, but is much flatter uh, after this process. In this example, we can see the progress of a 7,200 fold CDP gather uh, from this survey throughout the processing sequence up to the PSDM. Um, as it's well known, um, single sensor raw data is often uh, quite noisy, uh, but we can really appreciate in this example the power of uh, trace density allowing the uh, basically to peel off uh, the noise revealing very subtle events uh, in a very um, AVU friendly manner as we will see in a minute. Here is another example of the progress of the stack this time through the processing sequence. Note the broadband character uh, of the final PSDM stack uh, and the appearance of the clinoforms, uh, which are very subtle features in a very flat geological setting, uh, as you can see here uh, better in this uh, zoomed circle. And uh, when compared to the legacy data shown here to the left, the increase in quality and resolution of these uh, clinoforms is clearly visible uh, in addition to uh, other features as well that are showing uh, a better, uh, better resolution and continuity. Here we have some conventional AVO attributes and uh, azimuthal attributes extracted on the PSDM data. Conventional attributes such as uh, intercepts and uh, gradient have shown a good coherency uh, and a good correlation with the geology, as you can see here, with the low NRMSC values, uh, which indicates uh, a good uh, fit with the data set. The azimuthal attributes, on the other hand, uh, have shown extremely small values, which seems to agree with the interpreter's expectation in this area. Uh, however, it was interesting to notice that uh, some of these small values uh, field uh, did still show some coherency uh, and correlation with the geology, uh, which might be indicating uh, the existence uh, of uh, a weak azimuthal anisotropy in this area. The size and, um, of this field and its limited offset also poses some limitations uh, to what can be captured at this depth and scale. Also, the processing approach we took was quite conventional. Uh, I'm listing here to the left uh, some of the, uh, the other steps we applied in this project. Uh, we have noticed that uh, high trace density did benefit all processes that we have thrown at this uh, data set. Uh, we are not expecting this to stop um, as um, a lot of innovative technologies in processing, whether they are based on conventional approaches or based on machine learning, do in a way or another rely on uh, big data for training or redundancy of the information uh, to constrain their solution. Uh, in this type of uh, uh, and this type of data set ticks all, all of these uh, of these boxes. Uh, as I said, this is this particular survey had limited offsets uh, and the size was quite small. But uh, you know, this was a proof of proof of concept that these kind of surveys can be acquired at a much bigger, uh, much bigger scale. Um, beyond the density aspect, uh, the continuous recording uh, of, offered by uh, nodal systems is very valuable and useful, uh, free byproduct that is often ignored or discarded. Um, examples on the screen here on the right hand side uh, show uh, interferometry tests uh, that uh, we have run on this data set. Uh, the tests were run on uh, a blended data and uh, demonstrated how we can capture frequencies well below the active uh, source range. Um, as you can see here, uh, this is a virtual shot uh, uh, around a 2 hertz uh, value. 
So to conclude, um, we've seen that uh, acquisition tools to acquire much denser surveys uh, first time around are here, uh, um, even in an exploration context. Uh, we've seen that nimble autonomous nodes, such as uh, the stride nodes, uh, when combined with fast moving simultaneous source shooting, can deliver outstanding densities uh, at an affordable cost, a shorter time and uh, reduced HSE risk. Um, we've seen that um, combined with today's processing capabilities, this combination and type of data can uh, deliver uh, a better understanding of the subsurface a data set uh, fit for multi-route processing uh, to better answer um, different questions which come uh, sometimes with different constraints uh, and a data set that will be mined uh, by future processing technologies for much longer than uh, a sparse survey. Uh, and also we believe that this type of data set uh, will become very precious in the future as access becomes more restricted.